name is Mark Simmer. I work for the Minnesota Small Business Assistance Office, part of the Department of Employment and Economic Development, and I help manage these calls. We do a monthly call, second Tuesday of every month from 2 to 3 p.m. Uh, the partners on, on this call for, for people are the Minnesota Better Business Bureau, uh, the Minnesota Chamber of Commerce, the uh, U.S. Small Business Administration, and the uh, Minnesota Small Business Development Center Program. Today, joining us from the Minnesota Chamber of Commerce is Alex, and the program he's going to talk about is their Energy Smart Program. So to kick it right off, Alex, let's go. All right, thanks, Mark. I'm going to share my screen. Mark, just give me a thumbs up you to bet. make sure that worked. Excellent. OK, well, hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Alex. I am the program manager um, over here at Energy Smart at the Minnesota Chamber of Commerce. I'm going to run through a pretty brief presentation today and then hopefully have time for some uh, questions from the audience and we'll we'll take it from there. Get my slideshow to go. Here we go. OK. Um, all right, so I'm going to start with some a quick intro and some history. Then I'll focus mostly on uh, Energy Smart's process, kind of what we what we do, what we can do for you. I'll go through some additional resources at the end, um, and then just take questions. Great. So, quick bit of background: um, we have been Energy Smart has been around since uh, 2008. That is because in 2007, some state level legislation got passed. Um, NGEA here stands for the Next Generation Energy Act. Uh, basically, that created a um, requirement that uh, certain utilities put X amount of dollars every year towards energy efficiency and energy conservation programs. Uh, the main thing that this legislation created indirectly there then was the utility rebate programs. Um, and so that is the at the core of a lot of the work we, that we do, although we do the other things as well. Um, Energy Smart specifically has a focus on our contracts with XL Energy and Centerpoint Energy. XL is the largest utility in the state. They provide electricity for a lot of people and gas as well. Centerpoint is a gas utility. Um, we are focused on small and medium sized businesses, which is great. That's I imagine the majority of those in the audience. Um, so we're we're happy to be on your radar as a resource and I look forward to the discussions that we can have later on. I think it's also important to note that Energy Smart is we exist to function very much as a starting point. We can do quite a bit of things in house. But I think our the the most value we, we can provide is as a starting point for your energy efficiency journey. We are a great place to start so that you can ask questions, uh, review your goals, kind of talk through those. If you want goals and don't have them yet, we can help you create them um, and identify things to focus on and improve. And really, I think of us as kind of uh, a hub of a lot of different things. So things that we if we can't do it ourselves, we know who can and we can help connect you to that. Uh, and so we are always striving to be a uh, an organization that can connect the dots for people and connect people to resources that oftentimes already exist. It's just that um, people weren't aware of it or weren't sure quite how to take advantage of them and access them. So what that all means is we are your free, cannot emphasize that enough, your free first resource for your business. We provide and connect businesses with technical and financial assistance to save energy and money by improving energy efficiency in their operations. So here's kind of an overview of what our typical process looks like. Um, it does vary. Um, sometimes, you know, businesses will come to us with hey, I just need help figuring out how to get my bills lower, and that's our entry point with them. Sometimes they already have a particular project in mind, and we we start there. So we're, we're very keen to meet you where you're at, although we do always want to look uh, 
at the whole picture. Um, we are happy to help you with your specific LED project, but we also want to um, take a look at your HVAC systems while we're meeting with you, for example. So typically our process starts with a uh, consultation, uh, on-site audit, uh, and that is to uh, get to know you, get to know your space, start to identify projects, uh, and start to put together our list of recommendations. We typically follow up our initial audit with a written report that lays out all those recommendations. We try to keep that really user friendly um, and we prioritize, you know, there might be 15 different uh, action items in there, but we really try to distill it down to a top three uh, in most cases uh, that we think are really deserving of the majority of your over of your attention. We don't want it to be overwhelming. Um, if you decide you want to move forward with something that we recommend, um, whether it's you know a lighting upgrade or you um, are interested in replacing your existing air conditioner with a heat pump, anything like that. Um, if you have existing contractor relationships and people you like to work with, that's great. Um, if you need help finding contractors, we can help with that too, um, because the next step in the process is collecting estimates for your project. And then um, we can communicate with your contractors, keeping you in the loop, of course, to make sure that what they're proposing uh, is high efficiency equipment. I mentioned the utility rebate programs at the outset. Part of what makes this all work is that, you know, to earn a utility rebate, you have to hit certain efficiency thresholds in, in your uh, equipment. We're here to demystify all of that. We can review proposals, check, make, and model information, run the calculations, um, figure out, we can verify rebate eligibility, calculate what the rebate amounts should be, uh, and then from there, we can talk about any available incentives. So there's the rebates, those are the most uh, the most direct ones, most common ones, but depending on your situation, you may also be eligible for other incentives. Um, there is certain grant funding that we have access to. Um, and so that depends a lot on details. So uh, that's always kind of a case by case, but we are absolutely always trying to get you, throw as much money as your, at your project as we reasonably can. Um, to help you know incentivize those good decisions that's fundamentally what we're here to do is em empower good decision making so you've got your estimate you're happy with the rebate um and you decide to go through with the project we are here to help take care of all the paperwork um rebate applications for utilities do involve paperwork and we can do quite a bit of that for you um and that full rebate value goes directly to you. Again, we are free. We do not take any cut, any percentage of anything. Um, that rebate goes directly to you. Um, you can have it go to the contractor too, if you like. Um, but that's we'll talk about that on a case by case basis. Um, and then after that, you know, you've got the equipment installed. You're up and running. Your operational expenses are lowered, um, and we can leave it at that. Uh, but of course, we're only a phone call or an email away if you ever have anything else that you want to do. So um, we'll go in through those uh, pieces in a little bit more detail here. The audit, uh, as you can see from some of these pictures, is, a, is you know, we are going to be walking through your whole space. I end up on people's roofs all the time. I, you know, I'm in your basement. I'm looking around, crawling behind the water heater to get that to get that model number. Um, we want to see everything, like I said earlier. And we'll we usually have questions, you know, about your operational practices, maintenance practices, run times, things like that. We want to understand how energy gets used at your facility. We're typically focused on what we kind of call the big five. Uh, you know, that's your heating, your cooling, the control for heating and cooling, so thermostats, um, domestic hot water, and then lighting. That's the major energy systems in most places. Now, if you're a food service. Uh, establishment and you've got commercial kitchen equipment, obviously, then you've got some additional factors there. You've probably got uh, some degree of on site refrigeration, maybe even, you know, walk in coolers, walk in freezers. You've probably got cooking equipment. Um, you could probably got a kitchen hood. And so there's there's other things that we'll, of course, look at. Um, if you're a manufacturer, you probably have some process equipment. We'll, we'll look at that. Um, but in general, we're always looking for those big five and then whatever else applies for that particular situation. Um, 
we will usually talk to you about kind of where your equipment is at in its life cycle. Um, if there's anything that's you know on the horizon due for replacement, that's a really valuable time to work with us. If there's something that you you know, you kind of know it's going to be due for replacement in, you know, next year, a couple of years from now. Um, for a lot of these systems, you know, like, uh, you know, if it's a boiler, a furnace, um, even an air conditioner, a lot of these systems, once they're, they're installed, you're kind of stuck with it for 10, 15, 20 years. And so when those rare opportunities roll around to replace it, we want to help you replace it with the highest efficiency equipment that you possibly can. And we want to make that process as easy as we possibly can, um, because the, the operational cost of running, whatever it is you decide to install, um, typically ends up mattering a lot more than how much you paid for it in the first place. Um, one last thing I'll mention too on the, on the initial audit process is we Years, if there's anything funky going on, if you've got usage that doesn't match a typical seasonal pattern, that's something we can look into in the data and uh, do some follow up investigation as necessary. Um, our recommendations we kind of organize into a few different categories. We always try to include some low and no cost behavioral recommendations. There's basically always something there. Quite a few people have programmable thermostats that they're just not programming, for example. Um, there's energy savings there, and um, maybe you're just not sure what best practices are, or you're not sure how to program it. Um, we can help identify some of those easy things that don't cost anything to implement, to start doing. They just require a change in behavior, and we can help identify and coach on those things. Um, sometimes there's additional audits and assessments that are uh, kind of relevant or applicable to your situation, you know, there, that could be uh, something as simple as a uh, refrigeration assessment. And, you know, there are free options for that sometimes. Uh, if there's particular equipment that you need, if you're a larger facility that is kind of beyond the scope of our uh, audit capacity, there are additional programs through the utilities that we have good relationships with. We can help connect you with those, get to the best fit. Um, and though there's a lot of really great value options there. Um, sometimes it's our recommendations are more focused on that replacement planning. You know, it's not broken now, it's still working, but it's pretty old. It should be on your radar. Let's make a plan now so that you're not scrambling later. So we'll get those recommendations in writing to kind of help frame your thinking so that, you know, if your furnace breaks in January, as they frequently do, um, you have a plan and you know what to ask the contractor for and you don't just end up buying the lowest efficiency, cheapest thing just because you panic and it's what they have. Um, we want to we wanna do better than that if we can. Um, and then, yeah, we lastly, we also try to help explain the, the, the benefits because ultimately, you know, operational cost savings is is the main attraction for a lot of people, but there are safety and comfort uh, benefits to a lot of these pieces of equipment. And then also, you know, if if you're into that sort of thing, there's just the general, you know, using less energy um, and generating less pollution. That's that's always nice too. Um, so after we send the report with recommendations. Um, uh, you can move forward with collecting estimates on things. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. We can entertain a range of options and we can kind of give you the numbers to us to define what a good, better and best situation is for any given piece of equipment. Um, we want to get as close to best as we can, but we understand it's the real world and, you know, people have their constraints where we will work with you with what your constraints are. When it comes to putting the financial incentives together, um, I alluded to this earlier, there's a few different pieces that we can pull in depending on the specifics. Um, the utility rebates are almost always at the core of it and we can help verify that eligibility. Um, 
we can then also tie in as much grant funding as possible. Um, we have an in-house program. We also work with the city of Minneapolis, uh, and then we have started doing some uh, rural uh, energy grants as well. Um, we can have more nuanced discussions about those later, but I wanted to call those out that those do exist. And then there's also other financing options that we don't administer ourselves. We can help explain and connect you to um, whether it's property assessed, clean energy financing, PACE financing, um, a local you know, CDFI or bank or other, other options. We, we can help connect you with some resources there if you like. Um, and then ultimately, you know, the goal is to do good work and um, throw together incentives and save money. Um, this is an example of a project that we did in Minneapolis where a restaurant was opening and we uh, helped them with uh, proposal review and equipment selection and rebates and grants, and then ended up getting a few different pieces of uh, cooking equipment, uh, charbroiler char and convection oven if memory serves, and then also getting a really uh, high efficiency kitchen hood setup that had demand control ventilation. Um, and they were able to, as you can see, uh, acquire quite a bit of uh, financial incentives, over $17,000 between the grants and rebates, and also estimated first year cost savings of over thirteen and a half thousand dollars um, so that's the that's the brief rundown on what we what we do. Um, I'll call out a few other things that I, I always like people to be aware of. Um, these are not our programs, um, but they are kind of in energy efficiency world and most of them are free. So you should know about them. Um, Center for Energy and Environment, uh, they uh, work in Excel territory, particularly in the Metro here. Um, they can do refrigeration audits, they can do um, smart thermostats, free installations. Uh, they can do free LED assessments. Um, they're, they're a great organization. They do um, a lot of good work and we partner with them pretty frequently. Um, utility audit programs, there's too many to, to break out here, but just know that they exist. Um, I'm a particularly big fan of ones that involve are uh, geared towards new construction. There's some really excellent resources and technical assistance there and the custom rebates. So if you're ever, if you're in Excel or center point territory and you are building a new space or doing some kind of major remodel, um, please reach out to, uh, to Energy Smart and we can help you get connected with those appropriate programs. Um, multifamily, I don't know if there's any um, uh, multifamily business owners uh, on the call here. But Excel and Centerpoint, this is a joint project, so you don't you just have to have you know one of them uh, or both. That's fine. And th this is a free program that offers direct installs and an energy audit for your multifamily building. Um, so I highly recommend that. Uh, and then also a new program as of 2024 is the NESP uh, Nonprofit Energy Savings Program through Excel and they also offer direct install. So that's for, that's geared at, uh, that's geared at nonprofits, particularly nonprofits serving low income and disadvantaged communities. Um, but that comes with direct installs and bonus rebates and energy uh, audit and technical assistance. So wanted to mention that as well. All right, that's a lot of information. Um, that's all I have officially prepared. If there's anything that people wanna talk about right away, um, I'm ready for questions, but there's also my email up there and my phone number. Um, if you have a question that comes to you later or is you would just want to message me privately about, that is totally fine. That is awesome, Alex. I wasn't aware of, of all that information personally. I, I've got a couple of questions for you and maybe yeah. a suggestion. I've got a family member who's working for the uh, Roseville School District. Have you thought mm. about reaching out to school districts because he's in the food service and he was telling me about they have all these brand new ovens that are digitally controlled and all of that. And his challenge was, how do I explain this to to people who've used dials and, and you know, older, older equipment? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, because it reminds me of something I neglected to mention. Um, we are. The nature of our uh, the contracts we have it, 
we are focused on commercial buildings, so we we cannot really work. Energy smart can't work in um, in schools, houses of worship, government buildings, like public buildings, stuff like that. Okay. Um, so that is not to say that there's nothing for school districts. There absolutely there absolutely is, and any and any public buildings. Uh, I would direct them towards. Um, this is Roseville, so they're going to have XL Energy for electricity yeah. and gas. So I would I would highly recommend that they get enrolled in one of those um, audit programs. Uh, so they would school districts use enough energy. They probably have a a, a key account manager with XL yeah. Energy, and that person um, would be able to match them with the correct audit program to go through and make recommendations for the for the any number of schools in the district. Great. That is that's really good information. Um, I'm going to switch back and forth. Uh, we had a question come in if I can get down to the slider. Um, one question that we had that I submitted to you, I think earlier today is mm. someone asked with a new presidential administration coming right. in, will, will this program be around for yeah. a while, do you think? Um, yeah, fair question. Um, we should not be affected by that at all. Um, so we are because we are, um, you know, our work is funded by our contracts with the utilities. The utilities are not the federal government, and we are regulated at the state level by the Department of Commerce. Um, I don't anticipate being affected uh, at all. Great. Okay. Uh, someone just put it in the chat. Uh, how does demand control? <laughs> yeah i have to be able to read the whole thing yeah there we go how does demand control work yeah yeah demand control ventilation is one of my favorite technologies um and in <laughs> terms of bang for buck it's especially in a food service setting it's one of the best energy efficiency upgrades you can do and it's also something you can retrofit onto existing equipment frequently you don't have to buy all new stuff so the idea with demand control ventilation is um basically matching the amount of ventilation that's happening to the amount that you actually need. So if you think about a, a, a standard kitchen hood, um, yep. prep folks come in in the morning or, you know, it's start it's time to start cooking some stuff. You flip the, the hood on and it's goes from zero to a hundred and it's just on a hundred percent full blast until you turn it off after close or whenever. It is probably the case that during that whole time it was on, there was a wildly different amount of cooking actually happening underneath that hood. Sometimes yeah. you might just have the griddle going. Sometimes you might just have the fryer going. Very rarely are you going to have all your burners, all your griddles, your charbroiler, multiple fryers all running at the same time. And so the idea is, you don't want to have to vent all of that air out if you don't need to. You should vent as much as you need to for safety, obviously, like, of course. But it's important to remember that a kitchen hood essentially is an entirely additional HVAC system. So mm -hmm. you've got your furnace and your air conditioner, and they're heating and cooling and keeping the entire restaurant and kitchen space comfortable but the second you turn that kitchen hood on it's taking that nice comfortable air and it's chucking it outside and then it's replacing it with uh air that it then has to heat or cool to make up there's a there's a system called a make up air system that's that's part of the kitchen hood and so if you've got that kitchen hood running at full blast unnecessarily, you're basically taking this nice air that you put energy, i.e. money, into making comfortable, and you're just throwing it outside when you don't really need to. So the idea with demand control ventilation is you have some sensors and you have um, you set your motors up with, uh, with variable frequency drives and, and programming so that if you're... If you've only got that one, you know, six burner on and you can be and you only need 20 percent of your ventilation capacity, then that's all you're going to use. If, you know, you're it's it's dinner rush and it's super busy and you have to you're firing everything. 
then yeah, you have to run it 100%. That is what it is. That's fine. But if you don't need to, don't. And that's energy savings and it adds up really fast. Um, so that's the fundamental concept is match your energy use to the actual need. Um, and the way that that looks in a non-food service setting is uh, usually with occupancy sensors. So like you can do demand control ventilation in a school. You can do it in a theater. Um, think about places that have wildly different occupancy rates. Sometimes a theater has two people in it while they're cleaning up at, after a show. Sometimes it has a thousand people in it because it's a full house and there's a, a, there's a performance yeah. going on. The actual ventilation requirements for those two situations and everything in between vary a lot. And so you can have CO2 sensors. We breathe, we generate CO2. So CO2 is a really good analog, um, a really good proxy for how many people there are. And you just tie that in with your ventilation system. So it ramps up and down based on who's actually in the space uh, and what is actually needed. So that, that was probably a little long winded, but um, I did want to get the point across. Demand control is um, an excellent technology and it's one one that you can retrofit into a lot of situations. Oh, I, I think that's an excellent uh, uh, definition of, of what that is. I'm going to jump out to a pre-submitted question. Um, and the question is, uh, the person is curious whether tax exempt uh, properties are eligible to receive the free energy efficient consultation. Um, so like I mentioned, um, public, you know, if you're local government, yeah. if you're at schools, um, we, we Ener energy smart can't work with you directly. That said, there are other um, options. Some of these utility audits, um, CEE pro can provide audits for specific things like lighting and HVAC. Uh, they won't do a whole building audit, um, but they can help with particular systems. Um, and then I would say that nonprofits are a little bit of a, a case by case. Um, so we can okay. we can talk about it. There's we're not the only one in the nonprofit space is is the short answer. And so we can um, we can work with you to figure out what the best fit is. On Perfect. That front. All right. You know, rapid fire. We've we've had a lot of questions in the chat. So, are you the best person to schedule an energy assessment with? You can start with me. I've got. It's not just me at Energy Smart. We've got a team yeah. of six of us that do the audits, and so um, you can start with me. And I'll, if I can't do it myself, then I'll delegate it out to someone on my team. But yeah, we're all out and about doing audits all the time. Okay, great. Do you have a minimum uh, square footage size that you go out and and do an audit for? Um, nope, we don't have a minimum. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you're if if you're interested, uh, reach out and we'll we'll go from there. Okay, uh, I have a personal question, but to piggyback on that, do you work with the building owners, or do you get in situations where you're working with the the lessees of the building, uh -huh. and then you make a presentation to the the the, the lessor? Yeah, that's a good question. We. Uh, we do both is the short answer. We, okay. um, whoever reaches out to us, uh, is usually where we start. So with, I, I will say that we frequently work with, you know, um, commercial tenants. So, you know, whether it's, uh, you've, you've got a, a suite in a strip mall, um, yeah. or, yeah. you know, whatever we, and you're interested in making improvements or getting an audit for your space, we can do that. We do that all the time. It is relevant to know what you're responsible for. So, you know, yeah, frequently yeah. it's like, okay, what exactly is specified in your lease? Do you have, are you responsible for lighting, but not HVAC because it's outside of the building? Are you, you know, uh, are you responsible for everything, um, but you still have to get it okayed first? Is there some kind of cost sharing, you know? Yeah. Specifics apply, and 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 we'll need to talk about those. Um, but yeah, you do not have to own the space for us to work with you. Is the short answer? Perfect. I have a question here, and kind of a comment that'll help you uh, promote the the chamber. So, Alex, can you talk about the cost uh, for the audit recommendation services for non-member businesses that might be members of affiliate chambers but are not direct members of the Minnesota Chamber? And would you also recommend? 
connecting small businesses with local nonprofit lenders when appropriate to help finance improvements. Mm. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, so two parts yep. there. Yeah. Um, you do not have to be a member of the chamber of commerce to work with us. Cool. We're free. We're a service provided regardless. Um, so that's, that's the first, that's the first answer. Um, yep. the, the second piece about local lenders, CDFIs, um, uh, community development, financial institutions is what that acronym is. Um, we uh, we certainly are aware of of some of those, and we have worked with and collaborated with some of those organizations in the past. We try pretty hard to stay ven to to stay vendor yeah. neutral, but we yeah. can make you aware of some some options and, you, and encourage you to talk to multiple people and make a decision that's that's right for you. Um, but but yeah, I will I will say that there have been multiple projects I've been a part of where. Um, a local lender was key to making the project possible. Cool. That is that is really good to hear. Uh, here's an interesting question. Are there do you have any relationships that your office has with manufacturers in the energy sector? Um, I'm I yeah, know that's I a, that's a broad short question. Short answer is <laughs> no, like we don't have like we're not connected to a solar panel manufacturer that you know we say buy their product if that's if that's what the question is is getting at we have um i i know that there are manufacturers that are members of the chamber um but nobody's under any obligation to buy specific products based on chamber membership if if i'm understanding the question correctly okay all right Next one here, who would uh, be the best people to talk about getting free energy efficient consultations for tax exempt properties in greater Minnesota? Uh, would talking with individual utility audit programs uh, be our best bet? And I'll tack on mm -hmm. my question, do you work with Stearns County at all? That seems to be the one of the other larger energy mm. producers. Um, yeah, so I, I always encourage people to contact their utilities because there's a lot of utilities uh, in the state of Minnesota and they all offer slightly different things, but you don't know until you ask. Um, okay. Frequently, even smaller utilities, uh, more rural utilities, yeah, they might be a smaller operation, um, but it might be easier and faster to move through their systems and 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 talk to someone and figure out what they can what they can offer. Um, if there are not good, so start there. Talk to you, your your utility first. Got it. If there are not um, great options through your utility, then we can um, explore uh, working with you through our. Uh, REAP Grant Technical Assistance Program. Uh, REAP stands for Rural Energy for America Program. That's a federal program through the USDA. Um, and we do have um, a limited amount of funding to be able to help with uh, energy audits in, in greater Minnesota. Um, I will say that those are, we're a little bit booked out on those at the moment. Um, we're looking at the new year or later, um, but that is, a, that is an option um, and, our contract with the USDA goes for another, I think, two years. So it'll that'll be on the okay. uh, on the menu for a little while. Um, but you can, if whatever your particular situation is, you can reach out to me, and we'll try to figure out what makes the most sense. Cool. All right. Uh, another question. Oh, and sorry, recently... the Stearns County piece. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, Stearns County. Yes, we work at Stearns County. I'll actually be doing some visits there next week. Um, and oh. bonus points because for us because. Uh, Parts of Stearns County are in XL territory, which m means there's more uh, avenues for us to provide assistance. So, awesome. All right, another question here: If we recently installed equipment like a new water heater, are we still eligible for rebates? Mm. Great question. Um, maybe. Uh, okay. <laughs> different. Yes. Yeah, maybe is going to be the answer to a lot of questions. But um, I'm glad they brought up retroactive rebates. Uh, that is something that we work with people on a lot. Um, the reason I say maybe is that it depends on what the utility requirements are. For example, 
Uh, XL Energy has a uh, 24 month kind of look rolling look back window. Um, so if you installed mm. uh, rebate eligible equipment anytime in the last two years and you, you know, you've still got the invoice for it, um, we can help verify, you know, you know, look at the make and model, help verify that it earns a rebate and then help submit that application and you and you get the check. Easy. I just did one of those for a convection oven at a place in St. Paul that they bought over a year ago and they just got a check a couple weeks ago. Um, Centerpoint uh, also has a look back window, but it's just the calendar year. So if you, you know, right now it's mid November, if you bought a high efficiency, you know, gas fryer or a water heater um, in uh, January of this year, you can still submit for a rebate to Centerpoint. If you bought it last Christmas, you cannot because it is a new calendar year. So that's why I say maybe um, retroactive rebates absolutely do exist, but you need to see what your specific utility requirements are for that paperwork. Gotcha. All right, we're going to go with two last questions. How about solar? Is that included in your in your program? Um, good question. Um, not really. Uh, because the we're focused on energy efficiency okay. um, and solar is energy generation. So they're related, but not the same. However, um, we are, we as of very recently, um, just the last couple months, just starting um, out a pilot of a new uh, solar grant program. And so that's kind of our first foray into solar world. If solar is something you're um, interested in yeah. exploring, we can we can talk more about it. But I would stress that we are not um, solar experts. Uh, that's not our that's not our forte. But we we are aware of some resources, so we can talk about it. Gotcha. All right. Last question here: Do you do audits in Rochester, Minnesota? Oh. Good question. <laughs> yeah. I wish I had a better answer. Um, so mostly no is the answer, and that is because Rochester is not in Excel or center point territory. And with the way the um the rural energy grant funding works, um that's that applies to areas that are outside of the metro and also have a population of 50,000 or less. And Rochester yeah, is too gotcha. big. So yeah. the, the, we, can, we can do an audit um, at your facility if you're in Rochester and you are a member. That is, one of the, that is one of the things that being a member of the Minnesota Chamber of Commerce does get you. Um, our, our services are, are always free, member or non-member, but we can... Um, essentially work outside our typical contract area if you're a member. We'll we'll just make it work um, and still work with your local utilities on on rebates and stuff like that. So that's the that's the caveat to Rochester. If you're a member, yes. Otherwise, okay. no. Awesome. Uh, I learned a lot from from your information. You were able to condense it, explain it. It's I I could see it be a, a very valuable tool. I think one other question I had was, I think it was a couple of years ago, there were some Minnesota inventors that came up with a thermostat, which is what you were talking about with the demand control mm. um, uh, for use in hotels, motels, so you don't have to have every room at the same temperature. Yeah. Have you have you worked with that company at all? I, I just can't um, I'm not, I don't know that kind of that company specifically, but I do yeah. know that, you know, uh, Excel has a has a specific rebate for thermostats, like occupancy sensing thermostats for hotel rooms, and that may it may be very much due to companies like that existing and providing that kind of product. So, um, okay. I guess I would I would use that example to just to say that while a lot of rebate stuff is exactly what you'd think it would be, you know, high efficiency lighting high efficiency heating and cooling there are there are rebates out there for all kinds of things and so it's worth it's worth talking to us about it and yes. we can <laughs> and we can let you know um and yeah we'll do the do the best we can oh thank you alex very much and i, I think that's a really good point 
You don't know what you don't know. So give you a call, see if there are ways to improve. And I would guess most of us as homeowners, business owners, absolutely there are there are things to do. Yep. Yep. Um, All right. Lastly, I'll stress that we are that just because you mentioned homeowners, we are not a residential program. <laughs> Yeah, I should that. make that very clear. It's yeah. Commercial only. <laughs> I was just thinking in the context of we all. I, I just spoke to a woman. Uh, I think about last week, and what she was doing. She was starting a business for, kind of grew out of her own homeowners association. But she's going to work mm. with uh, commercial buildings to say, "Hey, let's up, upgrade your thermostat. I will come in and I will help." 50, 60 units, program them all together. And yeah. I thought, what a, what a great idea. It's great to have this new electronic device and you go, I don't know what to punch into it. I mean, I have a thermostat at home. It took me a little bit to learn how to use it. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I her idea was was really good. I think people get the idea, this, this could be a good tool for me. Now, how do I use it? Yep, yep. And we're, we're here to help navigate that. That is great. Thank you, Alex. Uh, I think we're going to move on. We have some other questions here, um, and we'll uh, we'll go to those. Uh, it's kind of interesting. The, the The next question we have here is someone wrote in super off topic, but I'm a crochet artist who sells at pop up shops and on Etsy. Are there any tax places you can run to help recommend to help me with my first filing for my business? And that is not necessarily off topic. We do talk about. Uh, things like that, certainly in the Small Business Assistance Office, certainly probably in the SBDC program. And I had just sent something out earlier today to someone on this. Let me just grab the uh, the link. It's a group called Prepare and Prosper. Um, it is a free service. There are some qualifications, but uh, Prepare and Pot Prosper helps people do their taxes. They have volunteer people who um, are, I believe what I read today was IRS certified. So that is a really good resource. Check them out, prepare and prosper. Um, and then Neela, who is our director of our Office of Small Business and Innovation. If you're on, do you want to come on and uh, see what else we want to talk about today? Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Alex, Thank you for being with us and uh, obviously as a partner of the Minnesota Chamber. And of course, Mark, thank you for your continued leadership hosting these, these monthly calls. Um, as you know, these meetings are, are for you, our businesses, to ask questions. Um, with, there's a many expertise on this call that could help answer any questions you have. So just encourage you, whether the questions are for Alex or for other general business questions, we want this time to be for you and to make um, your, your questions uh, easy to get some answers to and be able to point you in the right direction. So please, you know, raise your hand or use the chat. Oh, Mark, you're muted. Mark, you're muted. <laughs> I can't okay. unmute my own self. Uh, Andy Donahue from the Small Business Development Center shared with us this week that the Minnesota Paid Leave Program, that's a call from September, I'm just going to drop things in as I'm speaking, has come out with a employer resource toolkit. So the program will be running up, sorry, getting up and running uh, January 1st of 2026. Um, this is the uh, meeting recording that we talked about that includes a presentation. And their new toolkit is, I'm just going to grab the link for that, uh, for employers. I think that will be a very useful tool uh, to refer to for employers. It's, it's, uh, it's a brand new program, and it will be um, uh, a challenge for everyone to, to get their information up and, and understand the, uh, the program. All right, Charles, if you're around, which I believe you are, Charles Schaefer, my supervisor, can you talk on Corporate Transparency Act? Uh, being an HOA, oh, there we go, we just lost that. Uh, does the HOA come under the, it's called the Beneficial Ownership Information Reporting. So Charles, if you have a thought on that, I will. I would take that from you. I, I can, uh, and uh, I'm gonna phrase it this way. This is going to be a last look at the requirements of the beneficial ownership reporting that the U.S. Department of the Treasury requires of all small businesses in the United States, some, you know, 300 and some million of them, uh, by January 1st. Uh, they are required to report 
the beneficial owners, that is the people who have uh, ownership, their name, their address, uh, uh, their name, their name, their address, and other kinds of information that they have, and submit that to the Department of Treasury in a report through the business itself. Uh, the important thing to remember, however, is that the ownership of a ownership of stock in the business is not an indicator that you are a reporting uh, person. Everybody associated with the business who is controls something in the business or is a corporate officer. So presidents, vice presidents, uh, direct directors, uh, people like that, all are going to have to report those that beneficial ownership, whether or not they own any stock in the company at all. Uh, mm -hmm. The reporting begins, as I said, on January 1st. Uh, and... Uh, is done online. The Financial Crimes Enforcement Network of the Department of the Treasury, FinCEN, has a, uh, uh, a site there uh, where you can submit that report uh, either by download or uploading a report that you have in hard copy or by uh, filling in the blanks on a report that they have. But you got to do this by, the, uh, 20, by January 1st or else you got to pay a fine. And the fine is pretty substantially, mm -hmm. pretty substantial. Uh, 500 per day, dollars per day that the report is late and up to $10,000 uh, or in prison, a fine of up to $10,000 and imprisonment for up to two years if it is shown that it was willful, willful failure to file. So um, yes, it's worth looking at. The uh, Treasury has a very substantial website uh, there uh, under the FinCEN uh, uh, logo that talks about all of this in great detail going back the year and a half it, uh, since the uh, legislation passed. So uh, it's time to do it if you haven't done it yet. Yes. Thank you, Charles. Uh, we just had another question come in, and I'm going to go back to uh, some energy information. Um, so if you are a volunteer board member, you would not have to report only if an officer or director have to submit their personal information. Uh, Charles, would you agree that that would be a correct assumption? If, if you don't have any control over any of the things that happen at the business, you don't have to submit. But if yes. you have any control over the decision making there, and I think in the case, in the case of some businesses, they, uh, uh, volunteers do, volunteer board members do have some control over that. So uh, I would ask, I would uh, send a note to the FinCEN people and ask them on that. Yes, we have the uh, FAQs, uh, please up. Uh, FAQs is just posted there. Um, Maribel from the uh, Small Business Administration uh, sent in uh, nice information in the chat. Uh, new rebates and tax credits for upgrades that make homes more energy efficient, create major growth opportunities for plumbers, electricians, HVAC companies, solar installers, and more. And she put in a link, learn how to access these incentives and market them to your customers. So there is a link Maribel put in there and thank you for that. Uh, going down here. Um, can we get the website for the Treasury Department? Yes, that was just put in. And beneath that, I put in the FAQs, but I will drop that in again. It, so it is the U.S. Department of Treasury. It's their FinCEN, which stands for Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. And the report is called the Beneficial Ownership Report. And one other thing with that is basically any any business that has filed with, with a Secretary of State as a registration regardless of size, for the uh, ownership, things like that, for, for the most part, they all have to do the, the, the BOI. So, um, but the um, U.S. Department of Treasury has put up a really good website. It's super detailed. I've, I've looked at the reports themselves. Um, it's pretty straightforward. So if people haven't done that, like Charles said, go ahead and, and do that. Um, if we have other questions, we're certainly glad to, uh, to take those right now. can come off mute you can raise your hand whatever you would like to do if there's more information we can uh, we can get out to you oh 
Well, as the auctioneer say, going once, going twice, sold. We have no more questions. Thank you for joining us. Oh, we have we have a question here. How to get a transcript of the call? Um, that is something that I believe if you want to email me directly, I believe I can get access to the transcript. It's not as as simple as I thought it would would be, but just reach out to me directly. And um, uh, if there are things that you're looking for in the transcript, like, like the links and, and certain things, certain questions, reference those and I'll, I'll be glad to, uh, to get back to you on that. So again, with no other questions, we are done for today. I need to look at the calendar. We have a meeting in December, second Tuesday. So my calculations would be December 10th. So that would be our, our next meeting. Again, this meeting has been recorded. Hi, I'm sorry, recording. I have one more question if it's not too late. Sure. I was yeah, raising my hand, but I guess maybe it didn't come through. Um, nope. I joined a little bit late, but are, are there any programs for energy efficiency that support mobile businesses that are trying to go solar? Sorry, was that mobile businesses that are trying to go like install solar? Correct, yeah. He's thinking. No. Um, I don't have an easy answer to that. Um, let's. I guess I'd I'd want to I need to know more about the the particular setup. Mm -hmm. Um, because I don't know, I don't know how solar works when it's not connected to the grid which for mobile it would have to be a separate thing um, right where do you uh where do you operate in are you in the metro or are you out uh outstate no, i'm in the metro so i have um, a mobile coffee business and trying to go to solar and um battery powered versus using a generator and i have a little hmm. bit of knowledge is based on research but just really trying to find maybe even like a consultant who can help steer us in the right direction to make sure we're equipping the trailer the right way yeah um okay uh i why don't you send me um send me an email and we can talk about it because there are some uh, there are some solar companies that i could connect you with and then we could also just kind of run through what all what all equipment you're trying to power um, with that solar, and we can talk about the considerations to have to okay. to get that electricity demand as low as possible. Right. Well, do thank you very much. Yep. Thanks. Oh, th thanks for the question. Then, Alex, I just have one more question for you. Um, so, mobile businesses would be included in you coming out and taking a look at them. And how about seasonal, like? The small thing called the Minnesota State Fair, where you have 12 days of solid energy consumption for a, for a business, and then maybe that's that's the only time that they 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 really do that work there. Yeah, um, seasonal. I mean, seasonal stuff is gets a little wacky with trying to run any kind of like normal analysis on it, but okay. a lot of the other considerations for energy efficiency still apply. Um, so yeah, seasonal, seasonal is fine. I will, I, I do want to clarify on the, on the mobile stuff that like, that's not, I like, I can't do, uh, our like full normal process for, for a mobile business. I'm, I'm happy to, you know, have a, have a chat and do some recommendations, but we're again, okay. because like a mobile business isn't going to have like an account with a utility because it's that's not how it's set up um gotcha yep. you're probably yep. charging i mean if you have like a, a warehouse where you're storing things and and you know charging your batteries or whatever we can we can we can go there but it's hard to do a site visit for a a, a, a mobile place if you're just if you've got it the trailers like at your house when you're not operating. So um, I can do some general stuff, general recommendations and best practices, but I I can't 
do a whole lot. Clarify gotcha. that. I understand that. Thanks for the answers. I appreciate it. Um, Neela just threw in the chat. We're talking uh, about uh, kicking off the SBA this season of small business. Uh, she's got a Facebook link in here and uh, LinkedIn and Twitter. Uh, holiday season is coming up and we've got uh, small businesses that are really working this time of year really hard. So with that, if there's nothing else, I will see you later, everybody. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Mark. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you.